screening for atrial fibrillation is uh, a very intensively discussed topic for a while. And there are many potential benefits of screening, including prevention of stroke or systemic embolism, using oral anticoagulant therapy in patients with screen-detected atrial fibrillation, uh, prevention of subsequent onset of symptoms in um, originally asymptomatic patients having unknown atrial fibrillation. There is also potential for prevention or reversal of electrical or mechanical atrial remodeling, AF-related chemodynamic derangements, um, the prevention potential for preventing um, tachycardia-induced myopathy, prevention of AF-related morbidity, hospitalization, mortality, and overall reduction of adverse outcomes related to atrial fibrillation. There's a, these are potential benefits, and uh, these benefits come at a very low risk of at very low cost of potential risks, because abnormal screening results may cause anxiety in uh, patients. There could be a misinterpretation of ECG, which could lead to overdiagnosis and overtreatment of patients. But these, these risks are minimal in comparison to potential for benefits from AF screening. When considering screening for atrial fibrillation, in addition to choosing the technique or specific tool for screening, which will depend on local settings and availability of different tools, what is generally very important and thus is recommended in 2020 ACA guidelines, and this is class one recommendation level of evidence B, is that the individuals undergoing screening for atrial fibrillation are informed about the significance and treatment implication of detecting AF if they have screen detected atrial fibrillation. It is also of key importance that a structured referral platform is organized for screen positive cases for further physician-led clinical evaluation um, to confirm the diagnosis of atrial fibrillation and provide optimal management of patients with confirmed screen-detected atrial fibrillation, because it's not only about detecting the arrhythmia, it's also very much about managing the arrhythmia. And finally, to avoid misinterpretations, we have recommended that definite diagnosis of atrial fibrillation in screen-positive cases can be established only after physician reviews the single lead ECG recording of at least 30 seconds or conventional 12 lead ECG recording and confirms that it is really atrial fibrillation. Uh, when discussing the screening for AF, it is important to consider several aspects. First of all, we need to consider screening types and strategies. And regarding strategies, it is important to consider the healthcare level, healthcare system level, the screening is planned to be conducted at, then which specific strategy uh, should we consider only a predefined specific risk groups or just all individuals above some age threshold? And there is also a number, increasing number of available screening tools. Some of, the, of, of these tools um, are patient initiated, for example, um, self measurement of blood pressure then uh, photoplatysmography um, applications on smartphones or smartwatches. And there are some physician-initiated techniques such as auscultation, pulse palpation, using different monitors, then using prescribing variables uh, such as ECG patches, or handheld devices, um, and this range ends with intracardiac devices such as implant implantable intracardiac monitors 
or pacemakers, anti-bradycardia pacemakers, or implantable electronic cardiac devices, defibrillators with uh, memory and um, um, uh, in built-in algorithms for detection of atrial fibrillation. So overall, there is a multitude of possible tools for screening for AF. Some of them are based on photoplethysmography, and others are ECG based or a combined ECG and photoplethysmography. And in recent um, years, especially, there is expansion in development of uh, digital mobile health, mobile uh, phone based apps and tools for screening, for monitoring cardiac rhythm and um, uh, using algorithms for detection of atrial fibrillation. These are, for example, Apple and Fitbit uh, mobile applications um, based on smartwatches using a combination of PPG and ECG signals. Then uh, Huawei wristband using uh, photoplethysmography and so on. And most of these devices have a validated algorithm for AF detection and majority are CM marketed and most of them are already approved for AF detection. Nevertheless, it is important to consider other aspects of screening for AF uh, and that was uh, uh, that was the reason why in the 2020 ESC AF guidelines we have recommended opportunistic screening for AF by pulse taking or ECG rhythm strip in patients of 65 or more age old and that was class one level of evidence B recommendation whilst systematic ECG screening should be considered to detect atrial fibrillation in individuals aged 75 or more years or among those at increased risk of stroke. And that was class 2A, again, level of evidence B recommendation. There is also specific recommendation for post-stroke patients. And there was a debate whether it should be called screening or monitoring for AF, especially for the period when a patient is still hospitalized after acute event. And uh, we recommended that in patients with acute ischemic stroke or TIA and without previously known atrial fibrillation, monitoring for AF is recommended using a short-term ECG recording for at least in the first 24 hours after the acute event, which can be followed by continuous ECG monitoring for at least 72 hours whenever possible. And that's class one level of evidence B recommendation. In a selected stroke patients without previously known atrial fibrillation, additional prolonged ECG monitoring using long-term non-invasive ECG monitors or insertable, uh, insertable cardiac monitors should be considered as well to detect atrial fibrillation, class 2A recommendation level of evidence B and a long-term monitoring in patients with cryptogenic stroke, non-lacunar cryptogenic stroke, is also recommended in the most recent American Heart Association, American Stroke Association uh, guidelines for management of patients with acute stroke or TIA. And so far, a number of studies have shown that screening for AF results in increased detection of atrial fibrillation in patients without known history of AF and in patients without symptoms. But detecting atrial fibrillation is one goal. Next, what we need is to show that treating such screen detected atrial fibrillation would translate into better patient outcomes. And until recently, we have lacked studies showing such results. But uh, in the uh, last year or two, several studies uh, have been published addressing this issue. 
for example, in a stroke stop study, including all residents of the two regions in Sweden who were 75 to 76 years old at enrollment, and um, in those who consented to be screened for AF, um, intermittently recording ECG in the next 14 days, uh, showed that screening for atrial fibrillation uh, is uh, significantly associated with a small net benefit compared with standard of care, where symptom-driven management of atrial fibrillation is um, used. Uh, and this stroke stop study does indicated that screening is safe and beneficial in older population at increased risk of atrial fibrillation. However, another study, the LOOP study, that included uh, individuals aged 70 years or more with at least one additional stroke risk factor such as hypertension, diabetes, heart failure, previous stroke, and randomizing uh, included patients to control group with usual treatment strategies, symptom-driven treatment strategies, and those in whom an insertable loop recorder has been implanted, show that, of course, the more you look for atrial fibrillation, the more intensively and longer you look, the more AF, AF, AF you will detect. Because there was a, a 35, 32% of patients in the ILR group have been diagnosed with atrial fibrillation. Nevertheless, the symptom-driven diagnosis of AF in the control group was also rather high. 12% of patients in the control group were diagnosed with AF and a fairly high comparable proportion of patients in both treatment groups were initiated oral anticoagulant therapy after AF has been diagnosed. And um, the screen detected, the detection of atrial fibrillation using screening for AF has been associated with 1.1% absolute risk reduction in stroke or systemic embolism. However, the difference in comparison to the control group was not statistically significant. And as not surprisingly, the use of oral anticoagulant therapy was associated with um, a non-significant uh, trend towards increasing bleeding rates. So the LOOP study concluded that in individuals with stroke risk factors, a LOOP recorder screening resulted in a threefold increase in AF detection and significant oral anticoagulant therapy initiation but there was no significant reduction in the risk of stroke or systemic embolism in comparison to usual care control group. And um, these results could imply that not all AF uh, is worth screening for and not all screen detected atrial fibrillation merits oral anticoagulant therapy. And the main criticism for the study was that probably the threshold for initiation oral anticoagulant therapy in screen detected AF patients was um, very low, only six minutes of atrial fibrillation. But this still remains the holy grail. Uh, and we are still searching for it because um, a cutoff uh, of how much atrial fibrillation is worth treating is still remains unknown and importantly what we all know from our daily clinical practice a daily finding of air burden is highly variable and dynamic so today's six minutes could be six hours next day or the day after and we still need more data to establish the the recommendations for optimal management of patients with screen detected atrial fibrillation with regards to overall AF burden that can be measured.